for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Mad Cheese as always. Got another tips video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over some defensive tips, uh, which is probably the biggest problem in Madden 22, is people just don't know how to play defense. And I think one of the biggest reasons why is people don't necessarily understand what defenses do what and what adjustments you can make to improve the defense you're using. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over all the pre-snap adjustments you can make and what pre-snap adjustments you're going to want to make to make your defenses better as well. As I'm going to show you guys uh, individual tips like what specific zones do which i know a lot of people don't know uh things like that which i think are really important that will help people play better defensive man 22. so before i get into the video as always if you guys want to see more videos like this more tip Woo! videos uh, and stuff like that hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that let's go let's get right into the video now one of the most important tips when it comes to playing defense in madden 22 is uh matching personnel in this year's madden if you don't match personnel you have an opportunity to get absolutely pancaked and run over by the offense if you have say too many safety there's too many corners on the field and they come out in too much of a mismatch uh, where they have too many tight ends or too many fullbacks and stuff like that on the field. So you're always going to want to wait to see what your opponent's offense is running uh, before you pick your defensive play and match personnel as closely as possible as you can. You don't want to give up any advantages there. So if my opponent's coming out in something that's, you know, too tight end, I'm going to have to come out in something 3 4 4 3. If they're coming out in three wide, I'm pretty much going to want to match because linebackers will get roasted by receivers. So these are all things that you pretty much have to do in Madden 22 uh, so that you don't get completely abused by mismatches because that's a big thing so i'm going to start off with a pretty vanilla base defense we're just going to go three four and i'm just going to go random for now because i'm going to go over some of the adjustments you can make to stop the run now before i get into the video i just want to give a shout out to my coin sponsor this video is going to be brought to you by and all my videos are going to be brought to you by aoeah.com that's one of the best coin sponsors on the market if you guys want to support this channel all you have to do is buy your coins there i have a link in the description will take you right to that and if you use my discount code money you'll get three percent off what's already the cheapest coin so i just want to give them a shout out because i really appreciate that and i appreciate all the people that shop uh, through my channel when it comes to getting coins because it really makes a big difference as far as supporting my channel now as far as adjustments go when it comes to run defense the two most important things that you can probably do is your line adjustments now that's pretty much control with the d-pad you can see right here on the bottom it says defensive line and linebackers i would say the most important thing when it comes to um, adjusting your defensive line your linebackers especially against run defense you always want to make sure that you take away any gaps on the inside and you want to take away any outside leverage on the outside and that's a really simple adjustment you can make in just about any defense by essentially pinching your defensive line and spreading your linebackers to do that all you have to do is hit the d-pad to the left and down and then the d-pad to the right and up now when it comes to what zones do there are certain zones that are better run stopping zones things like cover four which is what this guy's in you'll see when the play starts if i don't guess pass if i don't guess run this guy here will shoot down and play the run first based off the fact that he's in a deep quarter any quarter coverage typically except for the outside the safety quarter coverage whether it's cover four drop or whether it's cover four quarters cover four palms cover four matching they will always play the run first as, as long as you don't guess pass if i guess pass they're going to drop back you can make one or two more adjustments if you really expect run you could always hit Y triangle and then base align or show blitz. If you show blitz, you can see how this guy here, he just comes right down to the box. Now this can be a problem based off of the fact that he, he, if it's a streak or something like that, he can just get cooked right off the line. If you uh, show blitz, or if you base the line, show blitz, and then base the line again, a lot of times the cornerbacks will go back so that they don't get beat, but the safeties will stay down. So that's something that you can do pretty much every time. Base aligning will typically just align them in front of their coverages, which I'll go ahead and I'll reset the play. I don't know if it'll work now, because once you user control somebody, it kind of messes that up. But if you base the line, show blitz, and then base the line again, typically these safeties will stay down, but the cornerbacks will drop back so that's kind of important if you base the line twice in that order which is something not a lot of people know about so we actually force picked a run play this time just so i can get that reaction but let's go ahead and let's base the line show blitz base the line one more time you can see here now like i was saying these these safeties are playing down because they're gonna play the run first and this cornerback's back so he doesn't get beat that's really important to know is that when you do that twice it's a huge advantage when it comes to the run then we'll make our adjustments uh, as far as pinching and you know shifting the line all that stuff and we'll let them run the play uh, although i did want to do the 
difference in the cloud flats and stuff like that. So like I said, you can see the safety there immediately drop down to play the run. Uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what happened in the replay because I did have the same defense where one of these guys is in a cover two. You can see he drops back immediately. He has to get back to his zone. You don't want your cover two safeties getting wrecked when it comes to pass plays. Now on the other side, cover four, this guy here, like I said, he walked right down to the box. Now you can see a huge difference when it comes to run defense where your safeties are plugging holes like this compared to your cover two guy who even though it's a run play and you know it's not something that he's he's not really doing anything so now we're going to pick an outside run to go with T tampa 2 because we're going to basically take a look at what the difference is between tampa 2 and man coverage so let's to pick that then on the offensive side we're just going to go with i form try to find some sort of stretch play we'll go with a toss i guess that makes the most sense so tampa 2 you know the difference between man coverage and cover 2 or any zone coverage really is that these guys typically have to cover an area not a player so if i think that my opponent's running cover two is really going to be one of the better ways to go so let's go ahead and let's you know if it's an outside run especially so let's go and let's let him run that i'm not really going to be in the way you can see that cornerback just completely shuts down the play outside because cover twos are going to be best when it comes to outside runs and i didn't even hard flat that play typically i'll go with a hard flat just so that i can um, get a little extra um you know protection outside when it comes to outside runs but you can see because he has to cover that zone and he doesn't have to cover that receiver he doesn't bite on anything he just basically holds down his area and just walks right down to the, into the into the uh where the running back's supposed to go and he did a really good job of taking on the blocker and stuffing the play i mean i didn't even expect that so next i'm going to show you guys the differences between what different zone coverage types do things like cover three a lot of times you'll see two different zones in yellow and a lot of people don't really know what those zones do same thing with the purple zones there the curl flats a lot of times people don't really know what the curl flat differences are so i'm going to go over that first and then i'll go over the differences in cover two between cloud flats and hard flats and stuff like that but this one here is probably one of the more interesting ones so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick the three sam will blitz so when it comes to cover three i think a lot of people see the three rack hook and just think that it just covers the middle i mean it's you know that's that's the area that um you know it, it has uh, it, it's got a big bubble here it looks like it's basically just going to stay in the middle it doesn't necessarily do that for the most part it will stay in the middle but what it does compared Compared to something like a hook zone or a vertical hook, uh, it, there's, they're very different. Number one, we see the bubble smaller, and I think that the reason for that is because it really does less functions than the three red hook. The vertical hook plays a very important part when it comes to cover three defense because its job is to go straight back. If there's a player in the seam, it will typically follow that seam player. Cover three is usually weak in the seam. You can see right here, there's huge gaps between the deep zones and that's really what this vertical hook's job is. So if you run a defense that doesn't even have a vertical hook, it could be very susceptible up to seams. But the vertical hooks will follow and try to take that the way, similar to the way that the mid read will in cover two zone. So that's very important. Now, when it comes to the three rack hook, the three rack hook will cover the middle here, but if nothing's in its area, it will typically stand around and do nothing, which is the last thing you want to see on your defense. So on the replay side, like I said, remember, we have our vertical hook guy here. Um, although I thought that he was in the middle of the play, but ultimately, yeah, this is our vertical hook guy here. So we're going to see, you know, this, oh, they're now fixed. Okay, really, really good game, man. So ultimately, like I said, we have some verticals here. This guy chucks him into the zone. And then, like I said, you can see this vertical hook stays all over that. Because if he doesn't, he only goes so far. I mean, you can change your depths and stuff like that in the defensive adjustments. But ultimately, he will follow that guy back to the point where there's not an immediately open receiver up the seam. I said I will take away I won't put that guy on a vertical hook this time and you'll see how this guy is basically just open right up the seam like I said that crosser definitely followed I mean obviously it wasn't a straight streak but still you can see there's a big difference so now we're going to take a look at the difference between a seam flat and a curl flat now I can get both of those simply by doing over the top coverage but we'll go ahead and we'll keep it in a seam flat for now because ultimately there is a major difference when it comes to these two and it really comes to once again will they crawl or will they follow so here you can see seam flat he follows that guy straight outside and makes a play if i were to switch that to a curl flat Although we'll go to the replay just in case anybody wasn't watching. You'll see that these curl flats are tip their match principles. They're typically more like the three rec. They're more like uh, the cover four quarters. They'll follow a little bit closer, a little bit more like man and undercut routes. So let's go ahead and let's go over the top. Now we're in our curl flats. It's a little bit different. We're going to run the exact same play. Let's say we have Henry here. You can see number one, he doesn't, he doesn't go into that area at all. You know, it's an easy completion when I go to the curl flat. 
I said, same thing, same exact play. All he did was play over the top. Number one, he's completely out of position. He's, it's not a matching principle. He doesn't really, he's just not in position at all. And it's based on the fact that he's not in the matching principles. Matching principles are much better in Madden 22 than anything else. So I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys learned anything new from this video, or if you like this video at all, do me a favor, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you guys are new to this channel, I appreciate a follow or subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.